Cubs baseball here today. Nice win last night and uh, should be a fun one. Big crowds expected the rest of the weekend. Uh, you know, popping around the ballpark earlier today. Every vendor, every usher, every fan I crossed said, what a great day for baseball. Finally, a beautiful day, picture perfect day here at Wrigley Field. So good weather to go on top of all this great baseball the Cubs have been playing. You like to do the three-star selection. Uh, Kyle Hendricks fits in that mix last night, and we'll talk about the other two guys, starting with Ben Zobris. Yeah, Zobris, a little bit of a slow start, but, uh, you know, he's such a, a seasoned pro. You know the numbers were going to turn around for him. That's why the Cubs signed him to a four-year deal, even though he's been in the league a long time, because you just trust him. You know what kind of a player he is. He's very versatile. Talked about his ability to play all over the field. Now the bat is starting to heat up. Had the big three-run homer in Pittsburgh the other night. Uh, last night, a two RBI single, and then the two-run home run there. Big swing of the bat by Zobra. So the numbers much improved for the veteran. You see it's through the first 21 games, 250 with a 731 OPS last four, hitting over 300 OPS up over 1,000. With 10 runs knocked in. So he'll be in the lineup playing second. Javier Baez plays short for Addison Russell. Tommy LaStella hits good pitching, and he's going to face a good one today. He was great last night. Yeah, he was. And, and Joe Ross, who worked for the Nationals last night, his repertoire kind of similar to Max Scherzer, who we'll see today. So it makes perfect sense to have Lestelle in there. He can handle velocity. You know, Ross was throwing 94-95, had that good hard slider. Unfazed was Tommy Lestelle. He had four bullets last night, three for four, a double. The only time they got him out was a solid line drive to right field. Time now for greater coverage and it's brought to you by T-Mobile and the Cubs starting rotation leading the majors at 2.12 and man you'd love for this to continue and speaking of the run differential Cubs are nearing plus 100 Joe Madden said that's about the starting pitching it's one thing to score runs but the starters aren't giving up any no they are not and just to give some perspective that that ERA uh, the comparison to 1918 remember that was dead ball era stuff where the league ERA back then was 2.77. This group is two runs better than league average. Unbelievable. Max Scherzer faces the Cubs today. Our Kelly Crawl caught up with him yesterday, and you will hear that conversation coming up next, and it'll be John Lackey for the Cubs.
Here comes the hook. The rookie, Kerry Wood, with 20 strikeouts on this date 18 years ago. And congrats, 30 years playing the uh, organ here at Wrigley Field. Gary Pressey and his mom, Virginia, watches every game, throwing out the ceremonial first pitch to Justin Grimm. Time now for our Coors Light game report with Kelly Kroll. Thanks a lot, Lynn. Well, Max Scherzer going for the Nationals today. Their ace, one of the most dominant pitchers in the game, and certainly likes coming to Wrigley Field in 19 innings pitched here, only giving up three earned runs, but he knows he's got a tall task in front of him with this potent Cubs offense, and he's looking forward to the challenge. Uh, as a player, you always want to face the best. I mean, this is what makes baseball fun to be able to come in here and face a hot team and uh, try to beat them. Uh, and it's going to be a difficult task for us, but uh, we should have fun this weekend. Tell me about that challenge. What do you think of this lineup when you see the guys that you're going to face top to bottom? <laughs> I mean, like you said, from top to bottom, you have guys that can at any pitch, uh, you know, take you deep. And that just as a pitcher just makes you be on your own to just have to go out there and mentally be locked in the whole time to make sure that all your pitches end up in the right spot because you make one mistake against these guys, it's, they're going to make you pay. And uh, that's what makes it fun is to face good teams like this is that you have to be so mentally locked in to go out there and compete against them. Mac, you've always said this is one of your favorite stops along the way, being in Chicago, being here at Wrigley. The fans right now are packing this place, okay? For you, that has to be great to get out there on the hill and be like, man, this is what it's all about. It really is. Uh, when you have all the fans out there and, you know, you get like a second and third situation and everybody's booing against you, like it's, <laughs> it's, it's awesome to be able to go out there and have success in that situation. So, I mean, we're, because we're on a 10 day road trip right now and, you know, we're all kind of joking about like, we enjoy actually playing on the road sometimes almost more because you have everybody against you. And uh, it's a great feeling when you can actually make everybody shut up, but it's good, tough going to make this crowd to shut up. There you heard, he's bringing out, the, we're bringing out the competitor, they're bringing out the competitor in you. Now, right. I know uh, your team off to a tremendous start as well. What can you say about the run support you've had and what your guys are doing as well as your pitching staff right now? I don't know, every time it seems like we win, everybody has a piece to do with it. Uh, you know, we're getting great starting pitching right now from everybody. Bullpen's doing their job and their offense. You know, it just seems like everybody at some point in time catches that torch and just keeps passing it along. And we're just playing great team baseball. And that's what, anyway, with Dusty here, we just have a great manager who just understands us and has us playing loose. And that's what makes baseball fun is when everybody has a piece in the win. You just, I, that's exactly where I was going to go. The, the difference of culture with Dusty Baker on uh, running this team this year, I, explain how that's changed things for you guys. Yeah, I mean, we have a different culture because your manager is your biggest leader. Uh, he provides your leadership towards your team, to your veterans, and uh, that's just kind of how a team works. And, uh, you know, his leadership style is just has us playing easy and loose and just believing in each other. And uh, any situation we face, we, all, we always believe we can overcome it. And uh, it's a great feeling to have when uh, you get to the early season results to uh, kind of reaffirm what he talks about. It seems very similar to what I hear guys say in the Cubs clubhouse about Joe Madden. Now, uh, you've never played for Joe, but you've seen from the outside. Do you think there are comparisons between what he and Dusty and the culture they try to uh, bring with them and the way they want guys to just be themselves? Do you think yeah, there's a comparison? I, th I think, you know, they, obviously they have different managerial styles, but the results are kind of the same. Uh, the, the players you know, love playing for them. They feel loose when they play underneath them. And uh, you've been able to see that from, uh, you know, any team that uh, Joe has managed with the Rays and the Cubs. So, uh, you know, he always seems to have a good time and really good time with all of his players. And everybody seems to have fun with them as well. Well, last but certainly not least, I know because you guys are represented by the same agent and being the pitcher that you are, I know you have to appreciate the kind of season Jake Arrieta had last year and what he's doing already this year. But when you watch a guy like that, what, what, do, what do you say uh, from afar? Wait, oh, man. Uh, it's impressive uh, to watch him go out there and compete and, uh, you know, really do it with the array of pitches that he has and uh, just to be consistent. I mean, being consistent at this level is just so hard. And uh, watch him get locked in and be able to do it start after start after start. I just know how hard that is. And so for him to be on this role uh, as another pitcher, it's fun to watch. Well, Max, thank you so much. I'm going to throw out a little M-I-Z so that you can finish it off here for me. That's right. Z-O-U. <laughs> All right, guys. Max Scherzer, back to you. Good stuff, Kelly. 
as Max Scherzer will face John Lackey in an excellent matchup on the mound. It's time now for our national anthem. Wayne Mesmer getting ready. At this time, please remain standing and join Wayne Mesmer as he honors America with our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the
10 Chicago is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer, who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. Ford, inviting you to check out their fuel-efficient lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by Southwest Airlines, transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Moments away from game two of this four game set the Cubs uh, just announced their minor league player and pitcher of the month for April we've talked about infielder Chesney Young at double A Tennessee off to a great start is 23 years old and right hander Paul Blackburn he's just 22 he went three and zero in five starts in April allowed one earned run in 31 innings of work. Double play combo today, Zobrist and Baez. Let's hear from Joe Madden singing both praises. You, you see it. You all, you've all been around him. You see it and uh, how consistent his play is. And then what it does is everybody else sees it, especially the young guys. And so this uh, the residual positive impact just by being around him to young players and players in general. Um, it, it's, it is hard to find. I mean, he's just, he's just, he's this thing that spreads in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, in a manner, it's almost like a good virus the way he is. And uh, he just has always been that way. Um, I mean, his defense is, you know, that's, it's really different in a good way. You know, Zoe, Zoe um, was a shortstop and we took him off shortstop and then went to the outfield slash second base, kind of like worked a little second base outfield with him, um, which really is kind of like his, his abilities are conducive to that. I'm not saying that Javi can't be that. Of course he can be. But I think you might eventually just want him to nail down a spot, I think, uh, probably in the middle of the field somewhere because he could really contribute more there normally. But for right now, I love where he is at regarding this, this super you kind of an attitude. Good stuff from Joe Madden. And speaking of good stuff, how about these two guys? Yeah, a couple of quality veterans. These guys ranked first and second last year in the league in first pitch strikes. They really get after you. Scherzer was number one in that regard. He's dropped off a little bit this year. Lackey, that's that's his game plan. It pounds the strike zone. And you see Scherzer has been very comfortable here at Wrigley Field. He's pitched three times. He's pitched scoreless baseball twice. There's a buck 42 ERA. John Lackey coming off an outstanding start last time out against the Braves. Two best records in all of baseball. The 21 and 6 Cubs, the 19 and 9 Nationals will have game 2 of the series on a glorious day next. Baseball on CSN Chicago is presented by State Farm. 
Weather heating up. Cubs come in having won four in a row as they host the Nationals game two of a four game series. John Lackey will pitch for the Cubs today against right hander Max Scherzer for the Nationals and let's get right into Dusty Baker's lineup brought to you by Southwest held to two runs on three hits last night after putting up 19 runs on 28 hits the previous two days combined they're happy to have Ben Revere their leadoff man back in their lineup off the DL today Rendon Harper Zimmerman two through four Daniel Murphy uh, second in the league in uh, batting Jason Worth homered last night in the night Wilson Ramos the catcher Danny Espinosa at short and Scherzer off to a good start with the bat will hit night. Cubs defensively Chris Bryant in left field today he's making his 12th start of the year in the outfield he's made 15 starts at third base Fowler uh, ejected in the ball game last night back in center Jason Hayward gets a start hopefully that wrist is Good to go. Lestella Baez on the left side of the infield as Addison Russell gets a day off. So and Rizzo on the right side and David Ross is behind the plate for our Alexis pursuing perfection starting pitcher. It's the big tall Texan John Lackey. Three and one with a 432 ERA. He's made five starts. League hits 237 against him. And as I mentioned, uh, Gets after it. High percentage of first pitch strikes, and he's willing to challenge a big part of the plate early on. It's John Hirschbeck, the crew chief back of the plate. Clint Fagan at first, DJ Rayburn. He'll be uh, spinning some records downtown after this one. He's at second. Vic Carapazza is at third. This is the only matinee, everything else, as per usual on a Friday, under the lights. So the game of the day the game of the world and we are underway ball one to Ben Revere and we not only welcome our CSN Chicago viewers but also those watching in Canada uh, Rogers sports net across the U.S. coast to coast on the MLB network and around the world on the American Forces Network and ESPN UK there's a strike one and two. Revere activated today. He got hurt on opening day. Strained oblique, missed 27 games. And he strikes out. He's 0 for 3 to start the season. He's in a deep slump. Fastball curve slider change for Lackey. Good breaking ball here. Very good depth on that pitch. And a slurvy breaking ball there to get the swing and miss. His best games. And Ben when he's used his curveball a fair bit. That was certainly the case last time out. Eight innings, three hits, two earned runs. And he only used the 99 pitches to get through those eight innings against Atlanta. Got a no decision. The uh, Braves won that one four to three and ten. And a little uh, John Lackey edge sprinkled in as it appeared he didn't appreciate a bunt attempt by Kelly Johnson and later when he was at the plate he had a long conversation with the Braves catcher Tyler Flowers one and one on Anthony Rendon he started that ball game with four no hit innings and that's the thing when you watch Lackey pitch I talked about how aggressive and efficient he is he has a lot of clean innings inside to uh, Rendon Cubs winning five to two last night. It was a shutout into the ninth before Jason Worth hit a two out, two run homer off Travis Wood. In again. Yeah, you see him drop down that arm angle every now and then to get a little extra run, whether he's trying to run it away from the lefty or in on the hands of a right handed hitter. A wind and the 3 1 pitch. Is hit foul and out of play. One thing for the defenders to remember today the wind will keep some foul balls possibly in play because it's blowing straight out out of the southwest at nine miles an hour. This might be the first hitter's day of the year here. Yeah. And 
note a very important uh, piece of this Nationals lineup. He's off to a slow start, hitting just a 223. We need to get to find a way to get more base runners on in front of Bryce Harper. High drive out in the deep left center. Bryant is on the track and it's gone. Rendon with a home run, second batter of the game, and it's one to nothing. Fourth home run allowed by a Lackey this year, second of the year for Rendon. Said, well, never mind getting on base for Harper. I'll just take matters into my own hands. Trying to go away with a fastball. And you see it drifts over the inner third. A compact swing for Rendon. Fourth allowed by Lackey this year. And here's Bryce Harper as the Nationals have their first lead of the series. Harper was one for one with three walks. And this would be the first out he has made in the set. As he grounds to Zobrist. Yeah, expect to see the Nationals swinging early because of Lackey's reputation. You know, they look at the scouting reports and in the, the video, they know how aggressive he is. So Harper, who walked three times last night, up there ready to swing. He got a pitch out over the heart of the plate, just didn't do much with it. Now the cleanup man, Ryan Zimmerman. One of the things you have to admire about Lackey, he does not let that home run affect him at all. We use the term, it's not his first rodeo, and considering he likes to wear cowboy hats and cowboy boots. And they play, I've got friends in low places when he takes them out. I think it's an appropriate yeah, phrase for John, the Texan. Gunslinger mentality out there. 0-2. Oh, you know, a lot of guys after giving up the home run to the, the number two hitter, Bryce Harper steps up there, the 42 home run guy last year, and he pumps a fastball right over the heart of the plate. Thought he had strike three. <laughs> there were some issues with Vic Carapaz's strike zone last night. Dexter Fowler. Got ejected for the first time in his career as a result. Swing and a miss to end the inning. Rendon with a home run. As Lackey continues to chat with Hirschbeck. Cubs are coming up. Leadoff man is presented by Benny's Beverage Depot. If Dexter Fowler gets a hit, Benny's Beverage Depot will donate $100 to the Greater Chicagoland Food Depository. And now the Cubs Southwest starting lineup Fowler, Hayward, Bryant, followed by Rizzo, Zobrist, and LaStella. Big couple of games for Ben. Javi Baez in for Addison Russell. The battery goes eight and nine. Ross and Lackey. 
National is good club defensively. They've only committed nine errors all year. As to Major League Baseball, Worth, Revere, Harper in the outfield, Rendon, Espinosa, Murphy, Zimmerman third to first. Wilson Ramos, strong arm behind the plate, and Alexis, starting pitcher for the Nats here today, hard throwing right hander Max Scherzer. 6'3, 210, he's 31 years old. In the St. Louis area, Maxwell M. Scherzer. Now you got get smart in my head. Up to it, Jaime. And he'll go. He'll max out around 97, 98. Sit comfortably at 94. And he like Lackey, typically very aggressive. And got a pretty good piece of Ramos. It's not a good way to start your Friday afternoon. I guess the best news for him is it's not his throwing arm. These are also with a swing and miss slider, change up in the curveball. So both these pitchers, you know, they attack with the fastball, but but they have a four pitch mix and they'll use all those secondary pitches. Second year with the Nationals through two no hitters last year and had quite a stretch of dominant performances. Two balls, two strikes on Fowler, who snapped a, a streak uh, last night. Six game streak of reaching base to start a game. His on base average 520 he's gotten on more often than not to start a game and again after taking his second called third strike in the third inning he got kicked out for the first time in his life any level he'd never been ejected from a baseball game. We'll get back out of play. I would say most guys first career ejection comes as a major leaguer. Maybe as a minor league. It shouldn't happen before that. Can't put up with that kind of behavior as an amateur. Of course, his behavior wasn't all that untoward last night. It looked like he was just trying to have a conversation. And Scherzer strikes him out. And apparently the conversation went a little too long for Vic Carapaza. So. Scherzer gets his man with that elevated fastball. Ninth season, 31 years of age, 108 wins against 63 losses. He's been an all-star each of the last three seasons. Cy Young Award in 13. And uh, one of just five pitchers to throw two no-hitters in the same season. Now Jason Hayward, first start since Sunday. All for two in his return to action last night came in to replace Fowler after he was ejected. And Jason trying to snap an 0 for 19. Swing and a miss. Still looking for his first home run. Yeah, Scherzer's not a one trick pony. Got several plus pitches and he could put you away with. It was June 20th of last year against the Pirates. First no hitter came within one batter of a perfect game. Remember, we were in Minnesota. It was after our day game and we were watching it on the, on the iPhone. Two and two. You got him. He hit uh, Jose Tabata. That's right. He hit Tabata with two outs in the night. That was the Pirates' only base runner. The start before that, a complete game, one hit shutout with 16 strikeouts and one walk. And while that didn't match Johnny Vandermeer's back-to-back -back no hitters, it could be argued he was better because of the Vandermeer walks. 
Two of the, the back to back dominating starts. Hard to top what Scherzer did in uh, June of last year. And then October 3rd, his second no hitter, that was at the Mets. So Hayward's on. Here's Chris Bryant. He struck out 260, or excuse me, 276 batters last year. He was the second best in Major League Baseball. Those other uh, two no hitter guys in the same season, by the way, you mentioned Vandermeer, Allie Reynolds in 51, Virgil Trucks in 52, and of course Nolan Ryan did it in 1973. Arietta will likely do it in 2016. Good lead by Hayward. Bryant with an 11 game hitting streak. He's playing left. Well, I'm going to underscore. The Scherzer stretch last June, okay? June right. 14th, complete game, one hitter, 16 strikeouts. Next game, retires 26 in a row, hits a batter, gets the next guy for a no hitter. The start after that, June 26th, five perfect innings to start that game. Top that, Jim DeShane. That's Christy Mathewson like. Bryant fouls back. And there was no talk about him as the Cy Young because of Arietta, Kershaw, and Greg. Yeah, yeah. Scherzer finished fifth behind Arietta, Grinky, Kershaw, and Garrett Cole. Swing and a miss, one and two. Right handed batters hitting uh, just 215 against Scherzer this year. Kind of like Joe Ross last night, he figured it's up to the lefties to get some damage done, not to say that the right handed hitters can't. Right. Just missed flying one out of here last night, and uh, it's a ball like that today, it will go. Scherzer with a with quick feet and then he just lob tossed it over to first. Yeah, he works really hard at controlling the running game too. He'll you know he'll he'll hold the ball, tries to uh, very scientific approach in terms of the timing of his delivery home. He's the first guy I've ever heard talk about actually practice practice practicing that in his bullpen sessions his side work you know most guys go down to you work and you throw a bunch from the, from the full lineup and you come set and you do you know you get to work from the set position but when he's doing that work he'll actually vary his times with his delivery home just to get used to doing that so it doesn't feel funky when he gets into a game situation he's smart Swing and a miss for out number two. So three batters in, no balls in play, two strikeouts and a walk, and now Anthony Rizzo. And reached on an intentional walk last night. Gets by and allows Hayward to advance to second. Pass ball charged to Ramos. Ramos, as I mentioned, has a strong throwing arm, but that's his best attribute back there. He's not a great receiver, particularly agile. He can hit. There's a lot of offense to the position. One 
one and one on Anthony. Another Anthony in this game, Rendon. With a home run in the top of the first inning. Is that a call? Is that a prediction? It's going to be a big day Maybe. for Anthony's here today. The Nationals 40th first inning run in 29 games. Scherzer on a pregame coverage chatting with Kelly Kroll talking about a, this great challenge of facing a team that is leading the majors in runs per game. Three and one. Yeah two things about this lineup that any pitcher has to deal with one the patience. Work a lot of walks, force you to throw a lot of pitches into the power and, and the power throughout the lineup. It's a lot of stress on a pitcher, even one as good as Scherzer. Base open. He's also got a really hot hitter on deck in Ben Zobrist. I, you know, he, he may not give in here to Rizzo, but I think that would be just a byproduct of his approach. Not so much that he's worried about you know, taking advantage of that base open situation. Over to Murphy. And shallow right in the inning. Is over as Hayward is stranded at second. One nothing Washington after an inning. On CSN Chicago is presented by State Farm. Huge crowd on a beautiful day, 73 degrees. One nothing Nationals. Daniel Murphy out toward the alley, and that ball will one hop the wall. And it's a leadoff double. Just before I was going to give you this note, in the first inning. This season, the Nationals hitting about 350, and they put up 40 runs. In the second inning, they're hitting a buck 21, 
And now a buck 20 with that hit. <laughs> yeah, well, and it those, scored one run. All those productive first innings probably leads to 8 9 1 batting in the yeah. second inning. Murphy, you, you, that, that swing right there, that, that's the new and improved Daniel Murphy. He's always been a high average line drive hitter. Now, a little more uppercut in that swing and hitting for power. And he too attacked that first pitch. So we'll, we'll see if, if Lackey makes an adjustment. And it's, it's a risk reward thing for a pitcher to challenge early. You can get some quick outs. Minimize the pitch count, but give up some damage too. Especially with that wind blowing out. Two strikes on Worth. Going into today, Murphy was at 382, second in the major leagues. And now he's up to 388. I'm going to ask you if you know who the top hitter average wise is. Worth strikes out. Slide ball. Uh, top top hitter in the big leagues in terms of batting average and number three on the list. So Murphy was second. second. 382. Uh, the top guy 383. Number three 381. Uh, I will give you a Joe dollar. Mauer. No. Mm. I might give you 25 guesses and I don't think you'd get it. <laughs> I have to wait for the Sunday paper to come out so I can look at the batting averages. Nick Castellanos Nick. of the Tigers is number one or was. Wow. And a Ledmes Diaz oh, of the Cardinals Diaz I number should have three. gotten. He's the top of the leaderboard in a lot of categories. That's a fun game. You Almost know, takes strike one. We've got to prep some of those for our next uh, replay challenge. Okay. Almost 0 for 4 last night. Came in at 343. He likes to swing the stick. Hardly ever walks. Thinking if you put together a composite of every major league hitter's stance, what would it look like? What would the average major league hitter's stance in terms of where his hands are and where his feet are? I was just watching Ramos. I'm guessing most guys would be a little open, right? Mm -hmm. Round ball toward the middle. Baez with a nice pick. And no tag. Rizzo thinks he got him. Clint Fagan said no. And we could see a challenge here as it is first and third with one out. Yeah, Anthony feels like he brushed his shoulder on the way by. So I'm going to take a couple minutes to decide whether to challenge or not. Let's see what we can discern here. Can't tell Nothing. there. Tell there. Hmm. You know, if we had a, an honesty policy in baseball, we could move this along. You know, Ramos says, "Yeah, he got me." So no challenge forthcoming. Ace hit for Ramos. So first and third. Here's Danny Espinosa. So anyway, where what Ramos was doing, I think, would be kind of close to what a lot yeah, of guys do yeah, these maybe, days. Yeah, maybe just a little less open, but I agree, a little bit open. I used to see a lot more closed stances decades ago, and when we see a guy with a closed stance now, it, it, it really stands out. Spinoza is a switch hitter. Yeah, you can't rule out the bun here. So 
He's in the buck 83, so obviously not seeing it real well. He's always been a guy capable of dropping down a bunt for a base hit. Scherzer on deck. He's swinging a little bit. But also might be hearing footsteps. They got a kid down in Triple A, Trey Turner, pretty good-looking uh, shortstop prospect. That's off to a very good start. Their Triple A club in Syracuse. Two hits in the inning. And Espinosa held up on a pitch in the dirt. He's had a heck of a career. 168 wins as a big leaguer. Another one blocked by Ross. Good factoid for you. John Lackey is one of seven active pitchers who started a game against the Expos. I figure Bartolo Colon pitched for them. He's one of those guys caught strike three. Big second out for Lackey. Couldn't get Espinosa to chase that breaking ball down, so he drops down and slings that fastball up. That little come on back to the inside corner heater. A situation that called for contact. Espinosa not able to pull the trigger. Great pitch. Four strikeouts for Lackey. Now it is Scherzer. In his career, and a base hit. That will send Murphy to the plate. Two to nothing. Scherzer with his seventh career RBI, and three of those have come this season. Well, that's been uh, kind of a Cubs success. Their pitchers have. Done a nice job offensively. Scherzer talked about his his abilities and delivers. The ball hit pretty well, but Fowler will make the catch on the move to retire Revere. Three hits and a run. Nationals with just their second second inning run of the season, leading two nothing.
back to Wrigley Field. This is your Coors Light in-game report. Max Scherzer just put the Nationals in front of nothing using the bat. Of course, known for his dangerous arms and by many fans also known for the two different colored eyes. And his wife, Erica, and he just had a new member, added a new member to their family last month. This is Rocco, a rescue dog who also has one blue eye and one brown eye. Talking to Max yesterday, he says this guy fits right in with their family and certainly makes him feel comfortable. But that's something, guys, that uh, Max has obviously gotten a lot of attention for. Even in college, I went to Mizzou with him, and in our uh, bookstore, they sold glasses that had different colored lenses so fans could wear those glasses to the game when he would pitch. So. Max Scherzer back out on the bump here in the second. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, his right eye is blue, left eye is brown. So that song, Don't You Make My Brown Eyes Blue, that's, that's going to, how do you deal with that? I've written that for him. And the whole thing about dogs looking like their owner, I mean, I don't know, right. it's spot on there. There's Ben Zobrist. You're not facing Max Scherzer when he's really on his game because two runs might be all he needs. But he's facing a good offense with uh, the wind pushing everything toward the wall today. Mm -hmm. Just got squeezed a little bit there with that first offering. I was talking with uh, Joe Madden when I asked him what was Zobrist like as a hitter when he was 26. He said when he came up, he hit line drives. But he didn't hit for power. He went down to the minor leagues, and at one point he came back, lowered his hands, and some of those balls started getting some lift and leaving the ballpark. Sounds like the Daniel Murphy story. Yeah. He's always been patient going way back to his minor league days with the Astros. That's where he first started. Always worked a high walk rate. We talked about it a lot you know, last year. One of just a handful of players in baseball to walk more than strike out. Doing that again this year. 3 2 pitch misses for ball four. A couple of things about the home run last night. I loved how he politely just set the bat down instead of doing the bat flip. And as he rounded first, he almost fell down. At first glance, I thought he had run into Brandon Hyde and he almost bit it. Brandon never even saw this until later when Zobra said, Man, I, I almost lost my footing. I think he was really excited, and while in slow motion, it didn't look like a big deal. But I think when Brandon put his hand out, he really hit it hard. Now Lestella with the leadoff man on base. Deep drive right field. Harper back. All he can do is watch it go. We are tied at two. And you talk about a hitter being locked in. This is impressive stuff. All night last night. And boom here this afternoon. Boom goes Lestella. <laughs> up, down, in, out, it doesn't matter. He's squaring up everything. Ford, a home run replay. It's been a bit of an issue. That's the sixth home run allowed by Scherzer here in the early going. Two to Baez. And that's the thing about Lestella. You know, I think opposing teams know he's a tough out. But he's generating more power than certainly I anticipated, and I'm guessing same for the opposing teams. Baez strikes out. Three for Scherzer. 
almost a self-fulfilling prophecy that Scherzer quoted in the morning paper today about pitching against his Cubs team and about how they grind out at bats and how there's dangerous hitters throughout the batting order. David Ross. Tribune's Mark Gonzalez. Had a note earlier this week quotes from both uh, David Ross and Dusty Baker. 2008 when uh, Dusty took over uh, in Cincinnati David Ross at that time was playing a lot. And had some back issues in spring training and was a part time player and David admits he, he didn't handle it too well. And, uh, even Dusty uh, in the aftermath said I, I learned some things too. He felt like he listened to too many people about playing time and he said I needed to give him a clean slate. So they both learned from it and become friends. And, and, and Ross told me today I asked him about it. But those are the types of moments that, that really have helped him help his younger teammates. When you're not playing and you think you should yeah. and how you handle Take that. a little broader perspective. Communicate ask questions. Two and oh on Lackey. He's given up runs in the first two but. Tommy Lestella got those right back with this second inning homer. There's a lot of managers who will say to their team hey my door is always open. And it may be but it just doesn't feel that way with some managers and the comfort level for players with certain managers I think they just don't feel comfortable walking in there and that's the challenge for a manager to, to make sure the environment is right where guys can come in and say hey what's the deal Skip. Lackey lines one in the center. So after Scherzer knocked in a run with a base hit, Lackey returns a favor with a two out single to keep the inning alive. Dusty Baker uh, is the uh, second winningest manager in Giants history behind Hall of Famer John McGraw by wide margin. McGraw well over 2,000 games. He's the third winningest manager in Reds history behind a couple Hall of Famers, Sparky Anderson and Bill McKechnie. Fowler who has struck out all three times to start the series. Swing and a miss. By Espinoza, and the inning is over. But Tommy Lastella getting this crowd excited with a home run to tie the game at two.
Back, we've played two innings and we're tied. 2-2. Two -two. Folks, don't wait. Plan now. Get tickets to the matchups you want before they are gone. The Cubs take on the uh, Padres in the three night game series starting this Monday. Get your tickets now at Cubs.com. The Fighting Friars are coming to town. They beat the Mets 5-3 last night. Colin Ray had a no-hitter into the seventh. Padres still the only franchise without a no-hitter. 7,519 games going back to 1969. Because Preston Gomez pulled his pitcher with a no hitter. Oh, he did. Did it twice. I think once when managing the Padres, once managing the Astros. I think I'm sure. I can either look it up or wait for somebody to respond on Twitter. <laughs> he was concerned about pitch counts back then. They were actually losing. You give so up a run on the air hit. and they pinch it. I believe that was a tie, maybe a tie game. Strike on Rendon. He homered into the bleachers in left center. Cap along at bat in the first. That's Colin Ray, R E A, as opposed to the country singer Colin Ray, R A Y E. Nice distinction. I'm not familiar with his work. Is he good? Yeah, he's good. Fowler's got it. Made an active pitcher reference. That means John Lackey's been around for a while. And among Guys still pitching. He is fifth in strikeouts, and just a couple of away from 2,000. It doesn't seem like Felix Hernandez has been around that long. Of course, he hasn't been around as long as those other guys. I wonder how many kids, little leaguers and such, high schoolers, when they come up to bat, they're doing this little uh, routine that Harper has. Tap, 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 toe and go. I bet a lot. Yeah. I'd be in my room working on that at night. Uh -huh. Stung. Harper's got the, uh, the one batting glove on the lower hand. And not on the uh, top hand, and he needs a second. And while we wait for him to get ready, uh, we had the note about CC Sabathia with the strikeouts. He goes to the DL. I think he's made that announcement today. Strained left groin. Garrett Richards of the Angels, their opening day starter, done for the year. Tommy John surgery. Still one and two on Harper. In related news Tim Lincecum is having a showcase today out in Scottsdale and I imagine <laughs> some interested scouts there from those two clubs. Climb the ladder here. And got him. Fifth strikeout for Lackey, the elevated heater looked too good. Piece of chocolate cake coming up there. It's bad for me. I gotta try it. <laughs> there have been uh, studies done on the strike zone the last couple of years. Umpires in general have called more low strikes. Maybe just out of what the typical strike zone is supposed to be. Last night, Dexter Fowler seemed to be asking Vic Carapazza. About the vertical part of his strike zone, whether it was going to be a low or a high zone. Well, I asked a couple of people today if you had to choose one or the other, would you want those pitches in the lower area called versus the high area? And the answer I got surprised me. You asked pitchers or hitters? Hitters. What do you think they down. said? I want it down. They did. You know why? They said that high pitch. 
and especially with the velocity today, so it's very hard to handle. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a swing and miss pitch. It's a pop up. Three and oh on Zimmerman. Yeah, and it's interesting because that's what has happened over the years. Umpires get reputations of either being a high ball guy or a low ball umpire. And I would imagine Carapazzo would defend himself saying, I'm just calling the strike zone. You, you, know, you determine what, you know, I'm not, I'm not. Fashioning myself as a high ball umpire or a low ball umpire, I'm calling what I believe the strike zone is. Three one is a strike. And remember, these umpires get graded, and so you know they're using technology the same as, as we're looking at here. So if those pitches at the top of the zone, if, if they're in the grid but being called balls, that's going to work against that umpire's evaluation. Three two is hit out into deep right center. Fowler to the warning track. The leap, he's got it. Right up against the wall. Inning over. Talked in spring training. Cubs moving their outfielders back just a little bit to take away slugging, and it worked there beautifully. Kick back and enjoy an all new episode of Beer Money. CSN tested the sports knowledge of fans at McDivitt's in Palos Park. Tune in to see who won big. Beer Money presented by Coors Light Sunday at 7. Right here on CSN. Ken Jennings was probably roaming around over there. Looking to score some extra cash. One well, and nothing on Jason Hayward. 2 2 tie. Snap is over, but he did walk on his first trip. What a catch by Fowler to end the top of this inning. It takes a little intestinal fortitude to not shy away from the uh, bricks, especially before the, uh, the ivy is in full bloom. Five pitch here, they would have had to outfit the outfielders with shoulder pads. They've been running into those walls so often. Scherzer's 3 1. 
Hines popped up behind second. And it's Espinoza. Time for our Xfinity high speed action. Zimmerman hits a lot of balls out there to the big part of the yard, right and left, and straight away center field. And as you mentioned, the Cubs playing deeper this year, and it pays off. It has paid off on a number of occasions already. Sure, double dies in the glove of Fowler. Big round of applause from John Lackey. Bryant, the strikeout victim, his first time, and he looks at a strike. Last night's starter, Joe Ross, ranks third in the National League in ERA at 123. Tomorrow, Gio Gonzalez, the lefty, will go. He's second, 115. Tanner Roark, who will pitch on Sunday, is 10th. Steven Strasburg, 11th. Max Scherzer, not on that list. Swing and a miss, strike three. We talked about this great start for the Cubs and their starting pitching and all the quality starts, but you know, just to, to limit it to quality starts is really doing them a disservice because most nights it's above and beyond the, the definition of a quality start. They've had so many shutdown type games. Jason Hamill will trot out there tomorrow with a 124 ERA and Arietta on Sunday will take his 0.84 earned run average to the mound. Rizzo high and deep to right. Is it going to stay fair? It is! Home run Anthony Rizzo as the Nationals are arguing that that ball was foul. Well, here's we'll the take another look. It, it hit the flag. For now, it's three to two. And this, this is the ground rule I've never checked on. Yeah, if it hits the pole, it's fair. I don't know. I, I'm assuming the flags are too. Well, I would say if it's in foul territory, the flag that is, that it would be foul. Wow, well, that, 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 this is interesting. We'll find out. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Like a golf shot. I don't think it hit the pin, but I think it hit the cloth. Hit the laundry. Ford home run replay. <laughs> I can't tell. Which way is the wind blowing? It did hit the I flag. Can't, I can't tell either. So first the umpires will gather to talk about it. Now they're going to go to the review. And then clearly it's not a ground rule situation. It's well, I think you've seen it all. Well, I'll tell you. On most days here early in the season, the wind pushes that ball way foul. And off the bat, I just assumed, I guess, that it would end up foul, but the wind helped keep it near fair territory. Time for our Forsyth Technology replay review. It's the uh, Sandberg flag. The key part of this is that they call it a home run and unless there's something definitive just because it ended up landing foul has is irrelevant because if it hit the right side of the pole or if it would have it should be a home run. Yeah I don't know <laughs> it's going to be very interesting to see what they determine back in the bat cave when they. Uh, Review this one. I mean, on that shot right there, is there anything that would tell you anything definitive? No, because I couldn't see it. 
Well, you answered I think my I, question. I, I, think, I think folks at home uh, on their big screens probably have a better look than we do. If it holds up, it'll be Rizzo's 10th. On the playground, see, with kids, you would just call it a double. Fight over for about half an hour, and then you'd call it a double. But I think I, I'm kind of with you, given that they've already ruled a home run. I don't know if they'll if they'll get a good enough look to determine otherwise. See their home run number 10 for Anthony. Yep, there it is. The stand. I said it was going to be a big day for Anthony. Just when you think you've seen everything. I don't have anything in front of me or found anything that says anything about the flags. So this is just based on what I think is common sense. The flag should have no bearing on fair or foul. It's a foul pole. So if they had determined definitively that it hit the flag while to the right of the pole, I think it's a foul ball. Was a crew chief review. And the Cubs lead three to two. Timing is everything, isn't it? Just depending on which way the wind's blowing, where, that, where those flags are positioned. Zobrist in the air to deep right. And it will go. He's got another. It's four to two. No controversy this time. Third home run for the Cubs today. The Nationals have won. Welcome to summertime, hitters. At least for a day. A little change up. And not a whole lot of bite until it ran into the uh, barrel of Zobris' bat. It's your Ford home run replay. Zobris is scorching hot. Up by La Stella, who homered his first time up. And it's caught by Rendon, and the inning is over. The Cubs go back to back, and they have the lead. Rizzo followed by Zobrist, and it's four to two.
visit uh, the Cubs Authentics auction page every week for your chance to own one of a kind uh, game used items. This week's auction includes game used items from Jake Arietta's no hitter against the Reds. Go to Cubs.com slash Authentics before 8 p.m. this Sunday to place your bid. Cubs will donate net proceeds from the sale of Cubs Authentics to Cubs charities. Rizzo has hit his 10th. Zolprist has homered in three consecutive games and now has a five game RBI streak. And John Lackey has a two run lead. Thing about the Rizzo home run, you rarely see home run balls that high when they get to the pole. That was a towering yeah, shot. Man. Big strong guys, right? You hit them high and hit them far. Three and one on Murphy. Now to hit last night, but Still came in over 400 his last seven games, and he doubled and scored in his first at bat today. He doesn't miss in the strike zone. Very rarely he swing and miss at a pitch in the zone. He doesn't chase that much either. He strike out a lot. And it hits first base. Murphy is two for two. So much for Murphy's law. Working out pretty well for him here today. He's a little in position to make the play, but right off the pillow. Seen a home run with a retired jersey flag, and now a <laughs> base hit off of first. Ball got lodged in the vines last night. Are we going to have a basket controversy before this series is over? Last year to hit the hit the yellow rope or line, whatever that is, and, and sprung back into play. Yeah. We've seen it maybe two or three yeah. times in the last decade. The general rule when the basket is in play, if a fly ball bounces up, it's a home run because it goes in and out of the basket. If it bounces down, it usually will have hit the part of the basket. That is in play, and it's not a home run. But then you have the very rare one that hits that yellow rope. The quirkiness of this ballpark is a big part of its charm. And I would say the same about you, Jim Shane. Hey, thank you very much. Going outside. Two and two. Hey, the great Willie Mays celebrating a birthday today. 85 years young for the Say Hey Kid. Happy birthday. One of the all time greats. And just a few years younger, our good buddy Larry Anderson also celebrating a birthday today. So happy birthday to LA. Fine radio broadcaster with the Phillies. Like Willie, Larry couldn't hit a lick. Even slider, fouled away by Worth. 
Another uh, quirk about this ballpark that on a rare occasion will come into play. How about the foul lines in the corners? Look how close it is to that mm -hmm. side wall. It's taking advantage of all the real estate, isn't it? As Lackey rings up Worth. Number 2,000 for John Lackey. See David Ross pressing that one into the strike zone a little bit. And ball's going to be thrown out of play. Quite an accomplishment. And he doesn't want to deal with it right now. He just wants a new ball and wants to go back to work, but he's going to get a big ovation from these fans. Side to Ramos. Two pitches off that outside corner. I'm trying to get Ramos to, to try to pull either that breaking ball or sinker away, trying to get him to pull it on the ground so he can get a double play. Need to get back into the count, a little get over hook. To be able to command that pitch, most hitters 2 0 3 1 are sitting fastball. So you don't have to snap off a great one, but if you can throw for a strike, it's a heck of a weapon. Hit in the air out into right center. Hayward early was calling off Fowler and he's got it. Sunday night, CSN goes one on one with Bulls chairman and 2016 Basketball Hall of Fame inductee Jerry Reinsdorf. Don't miss Inside Look Jerry Reinsdorf, presented by Cadillac, premiering Sunday at 7 on CSN Chicago. Shortstop Espinosa with two outs. Murphy's still at first. Lackey will throw over. Here this weekend, three in DC in mid June. Who knows, maybe an October matchup as well. And also, just a lifetime 229 hitter, but he does have power. 13 home runs last year, he hit 17 in 2012, 21 his best year, that was 2011. Just got hit again. Third time in the series he's been hit by a pitch. Yeah, I think they're trying to throw him that same fastball they struck him out with last time. It, you know, crossfire, try to get some run back to the inside corner. He just didn't get the movement.
Starter with a hit today. Scherzer's knocked in a run. Scherzer were to hit the ball in a line out the right field again this time. Jason Hayward would have a real good shot at throwing Murphy out at home plate, even with two outs. Going to happen as Scherzer strikes out number 2001 for Lackey, who's got a 4-2 lead in the fourth. The DraftKings Fantasy Sports Zone, located on the corner of Addison and Sheffield, is your game day headquarters. Open hours before the game. The DraftKings Fantasy Sports Zone is a large outdoor space, features live music, and a fully stocked signature Captain Morgan bar. Come out and enjoy this unique experience. Plus, fans with tickets have direct access to Wrigley Field. For more information, visit DraftKingsWrigley.com. Quality baby right there. Rocking the bow. Cubs leading Max Scherzer in the Nationals 4 to 2. All the runs coming on three homers. Last time we saw Scherzer here was the uh, end of May last year and he was lights out. Seven shutouts, struck out 13, didn't walk a man. Ball strike. Red Sox Yankees, they uh, matched up at Fenway last weekend. They're in the Bronx this weekend. Marcelo and Pineda later tonight. Dodgers are in Toronto. Kenta Maeda and Marcus Stroman, that'll be a fun matchup. Swing and a miss. It's one and two. See what the uh, Rockies did last night? Was it 13 in an inning? 13 run fifth inning. At San Francisco. Uh, yeah, I saw the score and I said, well, that's Coors Field. And then upon further review. 17 to 7 win. Matt Kane got cuffed around. He's 0 and 4. PV's had his struggles. I'm, the Giants may seriously consider. We're signing uh, Tim Linscombe, depending on what they see at that showcase today. The 
pocket foul to left. Yep, the, the guy who uh, your heart goes out to in that game was Chris Russell, the former Cub, starting for the Rockies. Uh, after that 13 run inning, he goes up back out there for the bottom of the fifth, could not finish the oh. bottom of the fifth. Had a 17 to 3 lead, <laughs> didn't qualify for the win. Oh. Strikes out. Yeah, that's rough. We'd like to welcome all our viewers watching on FNB Communications in Wheatland, Iowa. Now you could say, well, geez, Walt Weiss should just let him keep going. He still had a 10 run lead. It's Walt Weiss, it's not his job to get his pitcher's wins. It's his job to win. Yeah. And I guess if you manage in Coors Field, you, you always have that mindset that no lead is safe. Was late. And a good fastball, one and one. Good yet dangerous. I mean, that one caught a big part of home plate, too. And beatens tonight, Cole Hamels, Jordan Zimmerman, the former national. 3 0 versus 5 0. Rangers are in Detroit. Jordan Zimmerman is 5 and 0 with an 055 earned run average. Tapper to first. Zimmerman underhand. Scherzer had a little trouble finding first. Eventually he did. Two outs. And Scherzer makes a smart play there by going directly to the bag. A lot of times you'll see guys veer off. As if they're going to make a play on the ball and then have to make an adjustment, but he immediately went to the bag. Knew Zimmerman was going to be able to make the play on the ball. A little fancy footwork to make sure he gets the base. Lackey with two outs. And grounded to the shortstop Espinosa. Cubs go down one, two, three for the first time today against Scherzer. Hello, Patrick Mooney, our Cubs insider. All season long on CSNChicago.com, presented by Nationwide's Jeff Vukovic, serving the community for 38 years. Go to JeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. Gorgeous day here at the ballpark. Big crowd, Cubs looking for their fifth in a row. And they have a 4 to 2 lead. Some more Major League notes. Jung Ho. Gong is back. He is off 
the disabled list for the Pirates and in their lineup tonight in St. Louis. Third base. Yes. And David Freeze had been uh, playing a lot of third base and doing a nice job for Clint Hurdle. It will be interesting to see how they how they utilize Freeze going forward. We saw him a little bit at second base the other day in Pittsburgh. He play some first base. Revere just off the DL. He struck out and lined out. Acquired from Toronto in the Drew Storen deal in January. It's for average, doesn't walk much, only four career home runs and over 2,600 plate appearances. And that is a fair ball backhanded by Rizzo. And he gets it. Yeah, that's a double possible triple with Revere speed if Rizzo doesn't snag it. Nice play by the big fella. Revere's what the, in the old days they would call a, a punch and Judy. You don't hear that term very much anymore. A slap hitter. Good speed. Lackey to Rendon. Ball one. Well, you were here. You were in the booth next door on uh, May 6th, 1998. And Kerry Wood engineered one of the most dominating starts in the history of this game. He was a rookie against the Houston Astros. He did allow one hit, struck out 20. An infield hit. He was. The most dominating game I've ever seen, and I've seen a number of no hitters. And a perfect game. So Matt Cain's perfect game where he struck out 16, but still it wasn't as impressive as the 20 strikeout performance. That was a really good Astros lineup, and just the nature of the swings and misses he was getting. <laughs> it's a movement. Career start. The baby face kid. It was one of those games where up here on broadcast row as it started you saw the action on some of his pitches there's a lot of eye contact being made going we got a chance to see something pretty impressive here today. I think you had hair. I did. Back man. Back. That was probably even more impressive. <laughs> and Roger Clemens did it twice. Gary Woods the only guy to do it in the National League. First team hit 280 that year. They led the national. I believe they led the, led the national league and run scored. Well, yeah, it felt like it didn't matter who was the opposition that day. Agwell, Vigio, Derek Bell. Ball four. The Ricky Gutierrez got the hit. In some, in some ways, the fact he gave up a hit kept all the focus on the strikeouts. Although the no hitter with 20 strikeouts would, I think, have been stamped as the greatest of all yeah. time. No questions asked. Out hitting the Cubs five to four. They've got the tying run at the plate and a very dangerous guy at the plate. Maybe the most dangerous hitter in the major leagues today. And the lackey did not want to walk the guy in front of Bryce Harper. With the wind blowing out. Very 
able to lay off that changeup. Yeah, and you, you could argue, well, just just stay away, stay away from his power. But there is no away from his power. He has power to all fields. Try to go back upstairs where they got him last time. Well, David Ross just nailed Rendon, and Harper. Gets rung up by the third base umpire Vic Carapazza on the swing. So it ends up being a strike him out, throw him out, <laughs> unique double play. And once a week from David Ross now. Yes, he did. And yes, he did. Rizzo have partnered up to help raise funds uh, for the Anthony Rizzo Family Foundation. So uh, Bona, the family-owned restaurant group, now the official Italian beef of the Chicago Cubs, and uh, available throughout Wrigley. So the Rizzo way of preparing three classic sandwiches. This is the Italian beef. There's the meatball sandwich. There's the Italian beef and sausage combo. Uh, for every sandwich ordered the Rizzo way which means topped with red gravy mozzarella and provolone cheese. Yes. <laughs> Bono will donate a portion of the proceeds to the foundation. Which helps patients and families. Facing the devastating impact of a cancer diagnosis. The goal is to sell more than 250,000 sandwiches throughout the year. And you can order one. The Rizzo Way at any of Bona's 19 Chicagoland locations at BUONA.com. And they are selling it here at the ballpark, right? Yeah, they're in all the concessions and the suites. It's fantastic. Fowler flies out as we start the Cubs fifth. With David Ross. And Ross picked off five last year and you know he's part time player he led the league in catcher pickoffs he's got three already this year we've seen these guys conspire time and again with this play here Rizzo just kind of holds his ground close to the base as that base runner gets an aggressive secondary lead David with the quick feet snaps off the perfect throw. Now Ross is uh, the only catcher with more than one pickoff so far this season. Well you know that the, the, what makes him so good is he doesn't try it that much. There's some guys that really love to throw behind runners and they do it all the time and, and you know the element of surprise is gone at that point. Line shot out of the left center. Jason Hayward ends the over and he's going to try for two and he's safe. Snaps an O for 20. Time he gets to the Scherzer fastball, 94 mile hour heater. 
on a line towards the gap in left center. No hesitation at all from Hayward. He's circuit two the whole way. Revere's quick to the ball, but he doesn't have much of an arm. This Bryant struck out twice. He's got an 11 game hitting streak, the fourth hitting streak of his young career of at least 10 games. Follow in game live on CSNChicago.com, presented by State Farm. We can make Anthony to, to get together with a bakery or some cookies. Like he's got the Rizzo, so you can have the cereal in the morning. Right. You could do the bone of beef. Now we just gonna have the Rizzo oatmeal raisin cookie or something too to round it out. I love it. How about the omelet for breakfast? Since you had him as a main ingredient, yeah, the eggs. Yeah. Could do the omelet the Rizzo way with red gravy, mm -hmm. mozzarella, provolone. Swing and a miss, one and two. This long run of this would be uh, would be welcome for sure. Talked earlier about Scherzer in his. Uh, Ability to upset the timing of the base runner by holding the ball a long time and it affects the hitters too. This game is played with a certain rhythm and guys get used to the pitcher coming set. And then after a bit of time delivering home, he'll hold it a little bit extra just to upset the flow, if you will, for the hitter as well as the base runner. The challenge is not to upset your own rhythm as a pitcher. Talk a lot about it with Strope with a quick pitch. Uh, Scherzer with the way he holds the ball. You know, just little things that can be difference maker. And these are two guys, Strope and Scherzer, who have plus stuff. So you could argue they don't really need to do that. They, they got overpowering fastball, good breaking stuff. But if you can do it and still make quality pitches, why wouldn't you?
Perfect pitch, and this time holding the ball a long time again before delivering. You can almost sense Bryant's anxiety there. He's like, is he, is he going to throw or not? Not only does he make a pitch, but he makes an outstanding one on the outside corner. And so homered in the third. That gave the Cubs the lead. Bottom of your screen doubled with one out. Now there are two. And here's the pitch. That news. Uh, as we check out that home run, hit the flag, but they could not determine after saying it was a home run whether or not it was, in fact, foul. So the call stood. I was going to say bad news. Devin Mazzarocco, left shoulder surgery. Probably done for the year. A torn labor. Oh yeah, rough it's been years a real for grind for him. He's really emerging too. A couple of years ago, Put some very big numbers. Had the, the hip problems last year, now the shoulder. Hitters count. This time, a little bit later in the ballgame, already down two. Scherzer's going to be very careful with Rizzo with the base open. Even though Zobris is on deck. And Zobris obviously seeing it very well these days. Once you fall behind, you'd rather start with a fresh count as opposed to give in in a hitter's count. Two on for Zobris. Walk a homer, two runs today. Is putting together. Such a smart player. We talk all the time about his patient approach. But the definition of a quality at bat isn't always seeing a lot of pitches, it's being ready to hit and taking advantage of a mistake. Center cut and gone. Ford home run replay. Eight RBIs in the series. Two games in. Not even two full games in. Seven to two. Nobody up in the Nationals bullpen. Nobody throwing anyway. Four homers allowed by Scherzer. That ties his career high. Yeah, the wind is blowing out here today, but uh, all the home runs here legit. Sick. Sick. This one will be fair. Second on his way to third. He will stand there. It's a triple. And 
We talked at the outset about it would be up to the left handed hitters to inflict damage and indeed they have. <laughs> He's making it look easy. Nick Maddox will make a trip to the mound. About the infield today, Rizzo, Zobrist, Lestella. Huge performances at the plate. Javier Baez would like to chip in. He'll bat here with two outs and a man on third. Well, there you go again. Still not through five and a starting pitcher approaching 100 pitches. And a strike. Not just a starting pitcher, an elite starting pitcher. Really not getting an opportunity to eat my Rizzo away bonus sandwich with all this offense. Action in the Nationals bullpen, Blake Trinan. Still has a ways to go, but comes up five with run differential currently at plus 101. This is their uh, 28 game. Baez strikes out for the third time, but they haven't needed his offense today. Ben Zobrist with a three run shot. Third homer of the series, eight RBIs. Cubs lead seven to two. Planning your next social gathering plan a day or evening at Wrigley Field and enjoy special perks only available inside the ballpark. The Chicago Cubs offers special ticket packages for groups of 15 or more. Visit Cubs.com slash groups. Five run lead for Lackey and a strike. And Ryan Zimmerman. To go on the record and say that the Abona beef sandwich is outstanding. Yeah, very good. Breathing room for uh, Big John now. And typically, you're going to have to hit your way back against him. He doesn't walk many.
Zimmerman, as I mentioned before, has got good power middle of the field, and he's got that long swing, kind of stays through, stays extended through the zone. I don't see him hook many balls. Over but low. Eight strikeouts for Lackey here today. Season best 11 a couple of starts ago against the Cardinals. Well, he was brilliant that night. Seven shutout, 11 strikeouts, one walk. Miles looks it in before throwing out Zimmerman. Cub fans, show your team pride with Cubs checking. And an official Cubs MasterCard debit card only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. Go to Wintrust.com slash Cubs to learn more. Member FDIC. How's your mouth feeling right now? Got a little, a little heat. Got a little, a little heat kick. going. Yeah. Strike on Murphy. Major League Baseball has announced that the uh, Pirates Marlins series that had been scheduled at Hiram Bithorn Stadium in uh, Puerto Rico as Rizzo can't handle that hard hit ball Murphy's on uh, has been moved to Miami. Yeah when we were in Pittsburgh uh, talking to some people over there that was the indication we were getting that that would likely not happen in Puerto Rico. Is a single, so Murphy's three for three. He had four hits two days ago. So it's May 30th, 31st. Pirates Marlins move to Miami. Well, I've got to be a little careful here. Now he's gotten worth both times. Struck him out, swinging in the second, looking in the fourth. Certainly capable. He's at six home runs this year. Got one last night off Travis Wood in the ninth. Cubs announced earlier today the makeup dates for the two postponements on the last homestand: Braves and Cubs, July seventh. 705 first pitch and it'll be a day night doubleheader on August 16th against Milwaukee first pitch of the first game at 1220. The uh, April 30th game tickets will be honored. For the July 7th game. April 27th ticket will be honored for the first game on August 16th. With his three for three is hitting 400 to start the year. Worth went around and I think he thought that that ball was fouled to the dirt, but it was not. So he strikes out for the third time. Let's get a look. Well, he caught it. Yep. <laughs> Nine strikeouts for Lackey. High 
Popped up by the catcher Ramos. Baez in center. Makes a catch from the shortstop position. All Cubs today leading seven to two in the sixth. Seven to two ball game. Cubs lead. Uh, Cub fans, join the season ticket holder waiting list for today. Claim your spot in our lineup for season tickets. And what a lineup it is! It's easy. It's free to register. For details, visit cubs.com/slash/waiting list. Blake Trinan out of the Nationals bullpen. Max Scherzer gave up seven runs on seven hits in five innings, including four homers allowed. So back in uh, February, the question was: the Nationals' Blake Trinan has hit 100 miles per hour with this pitch that gets its name from its downward motion. And the answer is: what is sinker? It was on Jeopardy. Ross takes that sinker in the right. He's got two to start the sixth. Does that make it double jeopardy? <laughs> you know you have arrived when you're a jeopardy question or a crossword clue. It's hard to do throw 100 miles an hour and make it move. The category was hard throwing pitchers. He ended up being mentioned alongside uh, Randy Johnson as part of other questions. Justin Verlander, Ron Guidry, and Nolan Ryan. He knows one of the producers over there at Jeopardy. And he said he doesn't know anybody really? over there. And his name did come up. It was Double Jeopardy for that question. Jeopardy researchers was digging around fan graphs. If they ever have a category called salad toss and left handers, let me know. I'll tune in. Left-handers fastball. Same velocity as this right-handers changeup. Blackie will get a nice hand that will go one to four on the sacrifice. Yes, people are always appreciative of the sacrifice. It's human nature. The 
it's also a way of letting the people sitting around you that are a knowledgeable baseball person. Yeah, if you were new to the game and having it explained to you, you would kind of wonder why is this guy being cheered for making it out? That one, one and one. Pretty nasty slider there to go along with, with his 100 mile an hour sinker. Ground ball and a base hit. Ross will score. The two hits in this inning have come against 96, and then this one on 97. These guys can handle velocity. Yeah, they're just relentless. They just keep coming at you. That's just the second single of the day for the Cubs. A lot of extra base power tonight, this afternoon, rather. Four home runs, a couple of doubles. Four six three on an inning ending double play. Cubs do get another run. It's eight to two. It can be part of your next event from birthday parties and corporate outings to wedding receptions and charity events. Clark wants to be invited. Visit Cubs.com slash kids for more information on how to bring Clark to your next party. First pitch strike from Lackey to Espinosa. With uh, the Cubs bullpen busy. Seventh inning. Pitch 100 for the starter. Swing and a miss. Well, he got nicked early. One out home run in the first by Rendon. Murphy doubled to lead off the second. He came around to score, but not much since then. Not a whole lot of traffic. Only had one man reach scoring position since the second inning. Stephen Brew is on deck. And here he comes to the plate after Lackey. 
Just picked up his 10th strikeout. Most he's had in the game 12. Season high of 11. Three starts ago in St. Louis. Here's the uh, veteran infielder Stephen Drew. And a strike. Birthday greetings. Happy birthday, Jack Langford. Annie loves you. So say right here. Good change up. Happy 27th birthday, Keen Coke. Love mom. Don't forget about her tomorrow. And Lester and Lyle Hampton are celebrating their birthday on the bleachers today. Hit hard and foul to right. They are either 24, 74, or 28. Yeah, that's that's hard to read. Happy birthday anyway. I'm go with 28. Didn't get it. Steven, one of three Drew brothers to play in the big leagues. JD and Tim, his older brothers. Steven an infielder, Tim a pitcher, and JD an outfielder. Two balls, two strikes. Runs over his head, lackey to the plate. And the count holding. Yeah, J.D. Drew uh, last played in 2011. He had a nice career. 278 lifetime hitter, 242 home runs. Made an all-star team. I think when he first came in the league, people were expecting uh, more, but it's a good, solid career. He could not hold. That is number 11 for Lackey. So he's tied his season high. And as J.D. mentioned, he's now one away from tying his career best. He's had 12 twice. Most recently June of 2013. Max Scherzer had probably his worst start. As a national. Here today. And whether or not it'll be more of a tip your cap day from Scherzer to this Cubs offense, or if he will say, well, I, I could have helped my own cause, but I didn't do this or that. You know why he didn't have an answer for the left handed hitters? No. New going in, that was you know the, the the Cubs' best chance to do some damage was by the left-handed hitters, and they did. He you know he made some mistakes with his fastball out over the plate. Down by Lackey to end the inning, and it's time now for the Mazda seventh inning stretch on the big board today. For this afternoon stretch, please direct your attention to the left field video board. The stretch. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts.
34 year old left hander Oliver Perez is on. This is his 14th major league season. Again, as a starter, Padres and Pirates struggled in that role for the most part uh, with the Mets, especially uh, late in his tenure there. And he's been a very busy reliever since 2012 with Seattle. Bryant with a ground ball into the shift, picked up by Murphy, close at first, but they got him. So he put a ball in play for the first time, but hits right into the shift. Yeah, a bit of bad fortune there for the big guy after punching out three times. Put a good swing on one, but Murphy well positioned. He was just a kid when he first came to the big leagues in 2002. Last big year. strikeout pitcher. Yeah, really. yeah, big slider. Through all that hard, but deceptive. He's always walked a lot of guys. Backed off a little bit and you know, just kind of simplified things. Fastball slider now, pretty much all you see from Perez. Lots of arms and legs coming at you. Yeah, he's that glove turned almost inside out toward the hitter. It's the Oliver the Twist side. is what it is. Yeah, right. One and one. Padres, Pirates, Mets, Mariners, Diamondbacks, Astros, Nationals. This is the Oliver Twist. Ooh, with a little toe tap. Set that to music. I don't think I've seen that one yet. That was special. <laughs> that was a thing of beauty. He was doing improv <laughs> in the second city. Not just the twist, but the little toe tap and go. Ooh. So walks. I don't think Riz is quite as impressed as I was. What a day, what a series, what a week for Ben Zobrist. Six times now he's hit two homers in one game. As that one gets away, and those homers came left-handed. Now batting righty. Pass ball earlier in the game. This should be a wild pitch. Well. Remember last night when Zobrist hit the home run, you said we handed out the Bennies toast to the game too early to Kyle Hendricks. We're going to make it up to Ben today. Yeah. I think that's probably why he had such a big day. So, mm, I deserve that Bennies toast of the game. What is going on? Bennies Beverage Depot is the official champagne provider of the Chicago Cubs. With the tip of the cap to Tommy Lastella as well, both last night and this afternoon, who too has been on fire. Real pitch. It's a strike. Gets away. Rizzo will advance to third. It's a pass ball. 
Here comes Mike Maddox. Action in the Nationals bullpen. That'd be uh, Yusmera Petit, it is. Dusty Baker's got to balance out there in the bullpen. He's got four right handers, three lefties. A couple of those lefties we saw in the ballgame last night could really rush it up there. Closer is Jonathan Papelbon. A lot of uh, Cubs Nationals connections, former Cub and uh, coach Chris Spire back in uniform, the bench coach. Uh, he was out of uniform for a couple of years and kind of decided nobody was going to call. And then the next day, he got a call from Dusty. Six, four, three, double play to end the inning. So that was a good mound visit from Mike Maddox. But the Cubs lead eight to two. Today's CSN Bar of the Game presented by Coors Light is the Boundary Tavern and Grill. To see the complete list of the CSN Bars of the Game presented by Coors Light, visit CSNChicago.com. It's trailed this game 2-0 in the second. They have scored the last eight runs. Ben Zobra is putting together a National League Player of the Week type performance here these last three days. And here's Clayton Richard in for John Lackey. Clayton uh, worked a third of an inning in the ball game last night. It was the first time we'd seen him in quite some time. Came in, faced one man, struck him out. Justin Grimm is uh, loosening in the bullpen. Strike call to Rendon. Zobrist. One out. Forget at one point Bryce Harper was a catcher. Mm -hmm. Ball one. That is GED after his sophomore year of high school. The 
He was a, a young college player to Community College of Southern Nevada. Sport has is it's uh, can't miss people, you know, teenagers, and Bryce Harper was was that guy, and they don't always work out. They they, they do miss. Well, he didn't. Yeah, and sometimes you know, a lot of times they miss because of the, the, just the mental part of the game or can't handle the rigors of it. It's, it's interesting though, you know, he was he was the next big big thing, and then Mike Trout came along as the next big thing and kind of passed up Harper. Uh, and was the guy everybody identified as the best player in baseball. But I think you get a pretty lively debate now with what Harper has done. He was Baseball America's number one prospect before he ever played a minor league game. Didn't they, didn't they put him on the cover of Sports Illustrated when he was a teenager? Yep. So, yep. And he was the first high school athlete to be on SI's cover since LeBron James seven years prior. A tussle with his teammate at the end of last year, Jonathan Papelbon. Eventually they made up. Papelbon apologized. And Zimmerman, a strikeout victim of Clayton Richard. Two outs. How do you get to Wrigley Field? The Cubs suggest taking public transportation. The Cubs offer a free bike check. Now located near the Addison Red Line Station for drivers, the Cubs provide free remote parking and shuttle service on night and weekend games. For information, visit the A to Z guide on Cubs.com. Foul strike on Murphy. He's been a bright spot for the Nats today. It's three for three to up his batting average to 400. Going to be calling him Danny Ball game here. Before long. The staff's pretty good. Look at that. 2009. John Verducci's feature. Baseball's chosen one. <laughs> That's right. He pitched too. Got him at 96 miles an hour. Remember Cole Hamels hit him on purpose? Admitted that he hit him on purpose just to kind of give him a welcome to the show moment. Just under the glove of Baez, two on for the Nationals. Well, another four hit day for Murphy, my goodness. Just off the end of the glove, I don't know if there was going to be anything he could do with it. That's the the new improved Harper too. the guy who's been in the league a little while now dropping anchor there at second base. I think when he first came up he would have tried to run a third there even though his team was down six runs. Time for a change on the mound. Justin Grimm is in. I'll tell you about this right hander when we come back.
Tyre's tire and auto service pitching change, and here's Justin Grimm. Well, uh, last night, uh, Richard and Grimm uh, combined to pitch the seventh inning. Here they're going to get the eighth. Which we've got two outs. Grimm on to get the final one. These uh, boys on a heck of a job. Nine innings, 12 strikeouts, no walks, just six hits allowed. It's a comfortable lead, eight to two. But if North were to ride one out of here, all of a sudden it would be uh, far less comfortable. And that's why Joe decided to make the move for the hard throwing right hander. So Richard got the righties he faced, but didn't get the left handed hitters. But the mitigating circumstances are the left handed hitters were Bryce Harper and Daniel Murphy. The two best hitters. Yeah, and one's an MVP and the other one's hitting 400. 406 to be exact. Murphy began the day at 382. Two on, two down, and the pitch to Worth is at the bottom of the zone for a strike. Justin Grimm, not exactly the guy a right handed hitter wants to face after having. Struck out three times already. A deal with 95. And one of the better curveballs in the game. John Lackey today, seven innings, six hits, two runs, one walk, 11 strikeouts. Two and one on Worth, who's always had a good eye at the plate. it into the left field corner. Harper scores. Murphy around third. He will score. Four knocked in in this series for Worth on a couple of extra base hits. And it's eight to four. He saves his best for last, doesn't he? 0 for three. Last night before homering in his final at bat. You know, after striking out three times. A two run double. Those runs charged to Clayton Richard. Here comes the Wizard of Boz. Ramos bats. So many weapons out there in that bullpen now. Uh, you know, last year maybe Justin Grimm's not in this game because Joe would want to make sure he was available to go tomorrow. But with uh, Adam Warren throwing the ball the way he is, I mean, just the mix and match, got a lot of options. Almost one out of seven. So far in the series. Single to the second today, and he crushes one. And that one will leave the yard. Two run homer, eight to six. So much for that comfortable lead. And Ramos likes to hack at that first pitch. And may or may not have been the message delivered by Chris Basio, but whatever. Fastball just leaked on Justin. That's the one. The one to Worth too was meant to be out and it drifted down and in. This time, trying to go away and it runs back over the middle of the plate. Ford home run replay. Number three for Ramos.
Oliver Cahill now up. This bullpen has been awfully good. They have not had many bad innings. Two strikes on Espinoza. have clawed their way back with four runs. And it's now eight six Cubs in the eighth. Let's check out the Cubs upcoming game schedule and pitching probables brought to you by Travel Wisconsin. Plan your fun today at TravelWisconsin.com. Gonzalez, Hamill tomorrow, Roark, Arietta. Look at all the low mm -hmm. ERAs. <laughs> 235, the highest of the bunch. Strike on Javier Baez from Sean Kelly. Second appearance in as many days to start this series. Yeah, he's been awfully good. 13 punch outs, one walk, and eight and two thirds. Give up an Anderson Russell RBI double last night before striking out Tim Fedorovich to end the eighth inning. Guy who probably figured he was going to have a day off about 15 minutes ago. Got the final out in a non save spot last night. The Cubs were able to add on. Leading by a couple going into the eighth. Got three runs, two on the Zobrist homer, and then the Russell double. He likes that slide ball. It's a put away pitch for him. And the lines right to Murphy, the second baseman. You wonder why teams shift? That's why. 
His day, pretty much the same as Bryant's. Chris struck out three times, hit the ball sharply up the middle, turned into an out. Maya hits it right on the screws after three punch outs. But once again, Murphy perfectly positioned to make the play. That's why such an emphasis on on base and slugging. Worked a lot of walks, hit the ball out of the ballpark. Those two events are shift proof. Correct. Unless, they let, unless you can start positioning outfielders in the bleachers, which would be kind of fun. <laughs> the 0 1 is popped into shallow center. Murphy on the back pedal. Follow Cubs Baseball Live with the MLB.com at Bat app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day. Live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Soler. Ooh. Feel the breeze up here. Kind of felt good today. Might have to unbutton that top button. Solaire has not had a lot of playing time lately, but I think before all is said and done, he will be heard from. He's going to have to wait his time. Two and two. Guessing we might see Jorge in the lineup tomorrow. Potentially against the left hander, Gonzalez. We'll see. Strike three. Mm. It was off the uh, inside edge, but it's the way it's gone here lately for Solaire. So it's Rondon in the ninth trying to close out a two run ball game. Hefty, hefty, hefty home runs. Three straight days for Ben Zobrist. 
Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and another one here today. Two on the afternoon for Zorilla. Not a lot of dramatic finishes for the Cubs this year. You see, Rondon has four saves and four tries. That's not a lot for a team that's won 21 ball games. He's got an ERA of 0 0.96. Pinch hitter for the Nationals is Chris Heisey. Is he? I mean, really good at this job. Standing pinch hitter in his career. Yeah, early too. To Heisey. Chat with John Hirschbeck. Revere, Rendon, and if anybody reaches Harper, he would represent the tying run. So one, two, three would be nice. Mm -hmm. Rendon has been very aggressive this year. Throws first strike, first pitch strikes about 80% of the time. Boom. Ball strike three. Guys has got a bit of a, a point, but John Hirschbeck's had a fairly wide zone today. Tomorrow afternoon, two of the game's hottest pitchers get after it here at Wrigley. Jason Hamill and his 1.24 ERA up against. The lefty Gio Gonzalez, he's got a 1-1-5. Coverage begins at 2.30 right here on CSN Chicago. Don't miss it. Jay Ham. <laughs> that one doesn't flow quite as <laughs> well as some other nicknames, but we'll, we'll make it work. 1-0 on Revere. Ground ball Zobris. Two down. 39,206 packed into Wrigley Field today. And they will uh, stand as one and pull for Rondone to get Rondone. Thing in one. That thing in two. And two outstanding pitches to start the at bat. Fastball right on the corner, and then a little strike to ball slide piece. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Ross will fire to Rizzo. Cubs win. Cubs win their fifth in a row. They've won 22 of their first 28. Save number five for Hector. And as per usual with him lately, drama free. Three up, three down. What a day for Zobris. Tommy LaStella. Big Riz goes deep. John Lackey with his fourth win. Kind of atypical. You know, the Cubs have been able to run away and hide in so many of their games, but uh, credit the Nationals for making some noise late and making it interesting. Never gets old. That 
W flag will fly once again. Cubs now nine and three at home. To go with their 13 and three road record. They've got a full seven game lead over the Pirates who will play in St. Louis. Later this evening. Great weather day. Temperatures in the mid 70s. And the Cubs offense took advantage of that. Yeah, and they took it to Max Scherzer, one of the best pitchers in the game, got in for seven runs in five innings. Let's go down to Kelly Crow. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Well, uh, Anthony, there that second time around against Scherzer, you uh, really got a hold of that ball, your 11th home run of the year. How did it feel coming off the bat? Walk us through it. And then what you saw is, of course, it went out to right field there. Uh, just fastball inside. I got got inside of it. And uh, luckily, it's safe there. I don't know how. but. Uh, <laughs> And uh, uh, during the review, during the challenge, it's nerve wracking. So, uh, uh, but it was a nice win for us overall. It was over us uh, swinging the bat well, all of us, and uh, it was a nice win. I was just going to say, what can you say about the guy hitting right behind you in the lineup right now? His last three days have been something else. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's awesome. And uh, that's what our lineup's all about. It's guys going to get hot and cold, and uh, we're just going to feed off it. And got a good start out of Lackey, and uh, we held on there. I know you guys will tell me you're just playing great baseball, but for the last five games that you've won, it's against two of the better teams in the National League. What are you learning about this team when you face some of the best competition out there? Um, I think we're just we're just playing, like I said, and uh, we, we know what we can do. So it's more about just going out, and proving ourselves right every day, and uh, bringing it every single day. Okay, so the Rizzo Way sandwich debuted this afternoon at the ballpark. Lynn and JD gave it the thumbs up. Did you have anything to do with that recipe? What do you What do you think of it? Yeah, of course, with the <laughs> mozzarella on there and yeah. the, the, the sauce. So, uh, it's the way I like it. So, hopefully, everyone liked it. Awesome. Well, and all proceeds go to your foundation, Anthony. Thanks a lot. We appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, guys. Big win today, Anthony Rizzo, and of course, the Cubs move to 22 and six, guys. Thank you, Kelly. Nicely done. And we will have game three of this series tomorrow. Our pregame coverage starts at 2.30 Central Time. Cubs hosting the Nationals. Final score, Cubs 8, Nationals 6. Stay tuned. Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs postgame live is next.